everyone. This is Melissa Keller, Director of Events and Project Management for Vineyard Worship. We release new music on the first Friday of every month. Our single for April, Thin Place, draws from the Celtic Christian notion of a particular place being thin, where heaven and earth seem to meet, where God just seems to be more accessible, featuring poignant and transcendent vocal performances by Vineyard Worship favorite Ryan Dalmore and Taylor Lenhart from Mission House, Thin Place perfectly expresses the heart and spirit of this rich theological idea, carrying the listener into the presence of God. This is a thin place. This is where you meet with us This is sacred space This is where you meet with us Holy ground We are standing Find Thin Place and all of our singles wherever you listen to music. Hey, what up, everybody? You're listening to the Ferment Podcast, and today, obviously, we got the team with us in the same room. This rarely happens. It has never happened on the podcast. That's right. Mm-hmm. Correct. So, well, welcome to you guys, and welcome to the listeners. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about vineyard worship, kind of like from a 30,000-foot perspective, what we do, who we are, and hopefully we're going to talk a little bit about how to be more connected in vineyard worship. Like if you're a vineyard worship leader or if you're a band person or a tech person, if you're working and making Sunday morning happen, we want to talk to you about how you can be more included or like feel more in the center of what vineyard worship is. So that'll be the conversation. But I thought maybe we would do a little quick hitter stuff first. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I do this sometimes with people. So maybe we could start with Mike. Maybe this would be the first question. Old guitars or new guitars, Mike? Old guitars. Old guitars. Yeah. Casey? Old guitars. I, I have a hard time seeing anybody pick new guitars in this. Has anybody picked new, new guitars? I don't think anybody's picked new guitars okay. yet, but it's a fun binary. Melissa, do you have any thought about Rhodes that? Rhodes Piano. Rhodes Piano. It's a good old, choice. Old pianos. <laughs> old pianos. Old pianos. <laughs> old pianos. That's right. Uh, steak or sushi? Steak. Ooh. I'm going to go sushi. Sushi. S- sushi. Mm-hmm. Really? That's a surprise. Uh-huh. I know, this is You're a welcome. Jo- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing about this the other day because for some reason I had it in my mind that you did not like sushi. Right. But you are a sushi I person. I am. Uh, what it. we found out is that Melissa doesn't like sushi in any place that's in the interior of America. <laughs> <laughs> I have trust issues. I do. Clearly. I do. Clearly. <laughs> uh, all right, Mike, we'll start with you one more time. Maybe last quick hitter here. Mountains or beach? Mountains. It's oh, hard. Beach. Beach? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say mountains. Mountains. Uh, I'm, I'm mountains as well. There we go. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for playing our game. Yeah, here's what we want to do. This is what I was thinking about, and we were chatting this up just a, a bit ago when we were talking about this episode before we started. We were just talking about how lots of people are in vineyard worship, uh, and maybe we need to define that here in a minute, a little bit. Uh, Casey had a good thought about that. But there are almost 600 vineyard churches most vineyard churches have multiple vineyard worship leaders. Conservatively, I don't know, maybe they have four, you know? And you go, wow, there's 2,400 vineyard worship leaders in America. That doesn't include the rest of the world. How many bass players are there? 
how many drummers, how many techs, how many people who are running slides? And you realize, okay, there's just a big community that's out there. And a lot of them maybe know about Vineyard Worship on this end, the team here who helped serve. But it occurred to us, a lot of people don't know. And maybe a lot of people have come in in the last year, maybe because of all the pandemic stuff, there's been transitions at churches and people quit being a vineyard worship leader or, or maybe someone got hired. And so it would be really good maybe if we just let everybody know what is vineyard worship and what are the things we feel like we're called to do as a ministry inside of Vineyard USA to and for the vineyard churches. So that's sort of a, a preamble. But Mike, why don't you just why don't you just tell us like what are the things we do? You know, we've talked about our four little categories. Why don't you just let everybody know some about that? Yeah, so I've been a part of vineyard worship for a while. And by that, I mean, I've been in the vineyard churches since 94. Something that's been on my heart almost since the beginning is training and equipping, teaching, giving away what's been given to us, to me, equipping the churches. So my role with Vineyard Worship is director of Vineyard School of Worship. So what I'm doing is... We call it VSO. VSO. V-S-O-W dot org. Bing. So I'm in charge of... Essentially now what it is, is it's several conferences, right? And pre-pandemic, it was meeting in local churches and doing host homes and trying to keep the costs down, different events, right, where we're training and teaching and equipping the church at large. So that's simply it, is equipping our worship leaders within our family of churches. There's a language and a connectivity that is just more, it's a quicker way to access information and build friendships than the church at large, which we invite, and many times it is the church at large that attends our events. So training sound techs, training worship leaders, training bands, bass players, drummers. We did a band lab a year ago, right before the pandemic hit, which was incredible and so good to see your whole worship team around a table like this, a little bigger, but uh, training and teaching and and learning. So we're equipping the church at large. We're But here's the thing is we're doing it with kingdom-minded framework of this tension between the different streams of the church. How do we live in that tension and teach from that tension? What does it mean to be a bass player that lives in that tension or a sound tech or a worship leader that lives in the tension of kingdom-minded ministry? But then very practical, like moving into the practical from the theological framework, moving straight into practically how do we do this Sunday to Sunday, 52 weeks a year. So that's what I'm championing. We're building teams and doing sound labs and moving things online where we need to and can. Looking forward to being in person again. But that's what I do. That's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. So one of the things we do in Vineyard Worship, we feel like we're called to four specific things yeah. in particular. But one of the things that we're called to is training. Yep. And so when you think training, that's me. Yeah, that's Michael yep. Bryan, and there's a whole host of things that come along with that. Yeah, and there's lots of people that are passionate about it. So I am the director, but these are not, for many of us on this table, this is not our full-time job. We are, this is one of many things we do. I'm a local church worship leader. I'm a consultant to churches, and I train churches at large. But for our movement, for our people within the vineyard, within the states, that's my role and kind of my mandate to say, okay, between all of our churches in the cities, the large churches, the little churches, what can we best do in this next season to train and equip the people on the ground that are actually doing the work? And the great news is, is that I'm doing the work too with you. <laughs> so I'm still in the game. We're still all in it together. So, and we keep growing more teachers. Like this sound lab, we had four or five teachers from around the country, we would just chime in on their on their live stream and it'd be Doug Bell from the Mile High Vineyard. Hey, I'm going to walk you through the things we solved during the pandemic or Douglas Laws and the keys. Hey, we're going to walk you through what we've learned. So we're learning from one another. We are pulling from outside resources, experts outside um, of this world in the parachurch and whatnot, but we've got so much to learn from each other. So I just love putting all that together. Yeah, that's one of the very cool things about having almost 600 vineyard churches is 
there's someone who knows in the vineyard, like whatever we're dealing with, someone probably knows. And so even though you're the director of training, yeah. some of us just arranging who knows what, and then how can we get people to learn what yeah. they know? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Well, we'll probably come back to that in a minute because there's just a lot there that we yeah. didn't really dig into, but that's not the only thing we do. Casey, why don't you just tell everybody who you are, uh, where you're from, and, and then kind of how you serve this team and then how you serve right. Vineyard worship across the, the country here? My seat or my the box I live in mostly in the in the vineyard worship realm is is called document. So this is a classic word we've used historically to find and represent the best songs emerging and beyond that to voices and songwriters and that sort of thing, to bring those from our movement back to our movement, but also to the wider church. So what does that look like practically? It looks like working with songwriters on the ground, I focus mainly on our key top writers who are, you know, the people that are really called to do this at a larger level. We have a new partnership. We're a little over a year into a partnership with Integrity Music. So uh, we've been really raising the ceiling for what it means to write a vineyard song. And, and hopefully we're getting better at that. So Yeah. And one of the really cool surprises for me this year, especially as it relates to our Integrity Partnership and, and document and writing and, and curating songs, but really curating writers. One of the, the super cool things is even though we had a pandemic and we couldn't travel and all that, we wrote so many songs yes, this right. year. Yes. Like we're sitting on a ton of songs from our writers and co-write sessions. And that just feels really good. It right. feels like even in a year that was a lot of things got kind of knocked out from us, we were like super creative. Right. And that, that just feels like a huge win. Well, writing writing thrives in with ample amount of time. So we, yeah. we've, at least initially, we had an ample amount of time. Well, well, I guess one of the other encouraging parts for me was not just ample amount of time. And yes, we were freed up to do it. But learning that Zoom is a perfect technology, like you could be creative on Zoom, right? Because we do these like three hour blocks, and it sounds awkward. And then you get into it. And it's really great. And I think I know in the the wider writing world that the Zoom world was kind of unusual, but because we're so vineyard scatters its talent rather than gathers that we, you know, again, 600 churches here in the U.S., we were a little more accustomed to doing things remotely. So I think we were kind of well equipped to sort of move into this, this virtual space with that. These days, what does that look like on the top end? We release 10 monthly singles a year. We, we skip January, we skip December. Uh, we usually pull in January, we pull together all the singles that we did in the previous year. Uh, the most recent release there is called My Hope Has Come. Super excited about how that's done and just even cataloging all the work we did through 2020. Yeah, and we're kind of branching out into into new spaces in the, you know, or coming back to some space. We're in, we're in the middle of a uh, Vineyard Soul EP, uh, for those of you who know that. So that's our, our gospel expression. Had a writing pod with our key Vineyard Soul writers recently and wrote 25 to 30 songs. And yeah, lots of creative work happening. That's the nuts and bolts lo-fi. By the time this comes out, it'll have been out a few weeks. Exciting new uh, left of center release, uh, working with a talented young producer and worship leader named James Moscardini from the North Phoenix Vineyard. Very excited about that as well. So we're doing some, we're doing some down the middle stuff, but we're also kind of branching out of what it means to be vineyard, to write vineyard songs, to create vineyard recordings and expressions, you know, being a little arty in the whole thing. Yeah, that's really cool. And Maybe before we move past this moment and just some of the things that you're helping us with, why don't you just tell people about this thing that you and I have been talking about for about two years, the kinds of songs that kind of like bubble up from the vineyard. Because we're a community of writers. The vineyard's always been a creative community. We've been using the language of buckets. We need yeah. a new word, but, right. but this is right. what you and I have been talking about. Well, one of the challenges we have looking after vineyard worship and the, and the creative work that comes out of the vineyards is we are, like we've already said, we're 600 churches. So that's a challenging number to distill what comes out of our movement. Now, what I love about the diversity of our movement is all kinds of things are being written, and I think we're getting broader in many senses, but maybe back in the day, it was easier to kind of, even from a genre standpoint, describe what a vineyard song is. So in our current iteration, we've created these three lanes, or four, sorry, four lanes that we're living in that seem to be where most of our songs live. So the first lane we'll call modern worship. Now that's that's kind of a word that doesn't mean very much, but picture the thing that most people is, are singing, you know? Yeah, just like probably what you're already doing that's at your right. church. That's right. And there's a, certainly a uh, you know, we're pioneers in this space, really. And we continue to write relevant, 
mainstream worship songs that are easily accessible by the wider church. That's not something we're trying to top down impose. That's just what's coming up from within. So that's one bucket. Uh, second bucket is a thing we call Vineyard Soul, which yeah. is which is an this expression is super exciting. gospel R and B. One of the things that we're starting to do is even as we have these different categories, is even to to mix the paint a little bit. Yeah. But uh, certainly Vineyard Soul, as our movement is diversifying, we're trying to move that way. We're not going all the way into a group of songs that our average church won't be able to uh, express or play on a Sunday morning. Striking a balance between like what we might call gospel and we might call modern worship. And a lot of people use the phrase modern gospel. This is sort of the, the target for this. It's really aimed at the multi-ethnic church, but with a distinct black gospel expression. So yeah. again, we've got that, we got a four or five song EP coming out this summer in that bucket. Uh, a related uh, and sometimes overlapping other bucket is what we call our um, Hispanic, Latino, uh, Latinx, Spanglish. Yeah, the, bi the bilingual yeah. stuff. Now, Vineyard's a global movement, so we're writing songs in all kinds of languages all over the... Even in the U.S., we have Spanish only. Uh, but one of the things we've been trying to push the pedal on lately is songs that are indigenously written in Spanish and English. They're songs that can be, again, in this multi-ethnic environment that can kind of bridge the gap between these two languages. We uh, released a song, two songs last year, A God of Rest in the first part of 2020 and a song called Familia in, in late 2020 that kind of stylistically bridged the gap, but also they're indigenous in both Spanish and English. Even rhyming Spanish to English was super exciting. That part was one of the most fun parts for me mm -hmm. is Tina did such a great job of like the rhyme scheme, mm -hmm. even right. between English and Spanish. And it, it works. Right. It's, it's really brilliant. Yeah. And Tina Clone Williams, who's definitely one of our key voices these days is, you know, I think people are going to live in different ranges of where they fit into our world, but she certainly lives in the vineyard soul space, but also in, you know, very much in this. Tina Spanish. can go into any place That's she true. wants. That's she true. is so talented. That's, she can go That's anywhere true. she wants, but yeah, she really owns that, that bilingual and that, soul space that's in right. a beautiful way right and the last bucket is to some degree it's something that's been there from the beginning call it a uh, americana alt country roots rock sort of stuff so we still have a, a strong thread it's, i think it's modernized in a lot of ways we're, we're not playing you know songs that sound like they come out of the early 70s anymore but i uh, think john barnett think ryan delmore chris lazat uh, chris lazat hannah and matt H hannah and matt to spain uh, this is a strong community within our movement and I don't, I don't see that going anywhere. And it's, you know, it's definitely modernized as, you know, this particular genre bucket continues to move into the future in our, in our culture as well. But that's yeah. one of the things I love about this though, is there's not been like strategy applied to this. And by strategy, I don't mean planning. I just mean, you used the phrase top down a minute ago. It's not like we got in a room and decided, you know what we need to do? Right. We need to have Americana and soul and bilingual. And yeah, we'll do some normal worship. But instead, we just began to see, oh, these are the people that God gave us. That's right. This is who we are. It just naturally happens. Yeah. And right. uh, for me, that's just really beautiful. Yeah, our best work is songs that come out of the church, that come from in the trenches ministry. They're, we do our best work when, when our, our songs and our creative community is farm to table. It's not, you know, it's not something that's manufactured in a, in a worship song factory from somewhere else. It's, it's songs that come from everybody and everywhere. Well, that's, that's awesome. So that's the other part of what we do. We do some training, but then we also document. And document has a lot to do with like producing songs, but also has to do with caring about writers Right. Growing up writers, right. really trying to give expression to these buckets. That's right. Trying to give expression to these things that we see in the vineyard. Well, and and there's certainly room within that. Like we mentioned, I mentioned the Lo-Fi Project as well recently. We we have some bandwidth, not a lot of bandwidth, but we have some bandwidth to do some R&D here. So yeah. we're, we're doing some other things that that maybe as we expand as a movement to try to try our hand at, at a certain things or maybe bring emphasis to certain things just as they emerge. But this four bucket overlay is, I think it's helpful for us to actually have a, a cohesive identity for what we do at Vineyard Yeah, give some focus. And, and this might be a little bit insidery, but hey, that's what a podcast is for. One of the other things that Casey and I've talked about is you and I've talked about how we want to keep pressing in on R&D. Right. Like we, we want maybe 20% of what we do to be a risk. That's right. Like to take some kind of a musical risk, a genre risk, a risk with a new writer or, or per, right. like we want to do something new because I just have this feeling that the new thing, you know, air quotes here, the new thing is already here. We just have to 
we have to make space for it. Right. Yeah. Then there's those, those dangers of like, you know, falling in the ditch on either side of the road. One thing is to like dig our heels in and, you know, start naming things as not vineyard. This is, we don't really do that so much anymore, but it used to be a thing where we would you know, squash the new thing because it didn't fit our preconceived ideas of what we do and don't do. But, you know, the other side of it is just to throw out the old and just embrace the new. So I, I think we needed to hold on to both. Yeah. So, and it's interesting that what you're explaining there and even what Mike was explaining a minute ago, like, Again, it's the 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 deeply the tension. yeah the deeply vineyard value. I don't even know what the right word here is, but dynamic tension. Both end, yeah. both end, baby. That's who we are. Yeah. So, training, documenting, and then my good friend here, Melissa, is with me. Hello. Melissa, just tell everybody who you are and tell everybody what you do. Like, what okay. is what is what is the thing that you care for here? Okay, Melissa Keller, Southern California. Lead worship at Vineyard Fullerton. And for Vineyard Worship, director of events and also project management. So I take things from finished product production from Casey and help get them out into the world so everyone can listen to them. Yeah. And I just I just want to interject. It's very here. helpful. Yeah. And I just want to say here, I think everybody understands the event side of what you do mm-hmm. at a certain level. Like, you know, if you come to an event, you go, okay, somebody had to work on this mm-hmm. and that's pretty tangible and I can feel that and see it. But the project management side of what you do, I just want everybody on this podcast to know, it's a freaking big job. <laughs> it's so hard. Like it's like the the email stream that hits your box is yeah. devastating. It is. It and is. It's just hard. It I mean, it's just, it's a big deal. And especially when we're making music. Yeah. And, constantly. You know, and it has to go to, it has to go to Spotify. Yeah. It has to go to YouTube. Yep. It has to go to Apple mm-hmm. and Pandora. And Amazon. And Amazon. Uh-huh. And then the things, you know, it's just there's a lot there. So Yeah. And we have to talk about it on our social media, right? Yeah. So then we got to project manage that. Like, how are we going to talk about it? Yeah. What's that going to look like? Right. That's right. There's so there's a just a lot, lot of details there. Aren't yeah. There? I'm a detail person, right? So there's details in project management. There's details in events. Mm-hmm. So the, I'm a detailed person. So I do events for Vineyard Worship. Retreats was my baby for a while, and then we went into pandemic. So 2020 uh, yeah. looked a little different, but retreats are still my baby, and I love them. And they will come again. They will come again. very soon. I think so. Worship leader retreats. Maybe we invent new retreats, you yeah. know, different events. So, yeah, I do our event But the management. But the heading that you yes. work under, because— Mike is like training, Casey is document, and your heading is gather. Talk just talk about gathering. Like why why is that even a big deal for us? Well, there's layers here. First of all, I will say to me, it's part of who I am. And I think it's part of who we are as the vineyard, as a vineyard movement. Like when I think about the vineyard, I think about our global family, right? Like what does a family do? They want to get together. When I was young, my favorite memories are growing up in a house full of people because my family loved to gather. I'm sure it's the same for all of you, for all of us, right? Like we love as a family being together. So early memories of my childhood, my personal family, but also in the vineyard, I've just always been a part of these gathered moments, right, where we come together. And so they do that for pastors, but we do that for worship leaders, for worship people. And there's so many layers to a gathered people, right, that happen. It's about community. It's about spurring one another on. It's about like this phrase, it's caught, not taught. That happens and we can talk through more of these things, but that's a yeah. big, big part of that, right? We we gather people so we can pull in new, we can pull in young and say, hey, this is what's happening. Come join us, come be a part of it, inspire one another, you know? So there's there's a lot that happens in our events. I think it's one of the biggest, yeah, it's one of our four main, it's, 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 it's huge. It's deeply important to us. Yeah. And, you know, like COVID times shifted a lot of what we were doing. Right. Like, mm-hmm by necessity, but it does feel like, okay, by the end of this year, there's going to be some kind of gather. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Hopefully something this summer, but there's going to be some kind of gather this year. And then by 22, I think we're back in it. Yeah. You know? And how much sweeter will it be, you know? like I think people are going to lose their minds. Right, right, <laughs> that's absolutely. What I, that's what I think. Yeah. yeah. And the whole point of gathering, you come with expectation, right? I think the expectation is going to be so different and so it's just going to be so much more, you know? Yeah. I think they're going to be... I, I think I just want to add one thing together. Yeah. The gather side of what we do in the vineyard is about, clearly it's about gathering with one another, mm-hmm. but it's also about gathering to meet with God. Yes. Like, like that's always a thing in there, right? Yeah. Like that's mm-hmm. the, that's the locus from which everything flows. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're, we're, we're a God people. 
So we want to meet with each other, but we know that at these events, mm -hmm. people go home and tell stories. And the, and the stories they tell are almost, well, I met with God, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. So that, it occurs to me that that's a part of the gather as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That... yeah, I'm thinking through, just as you're speaking, this past year, the loss of what hasn't been able to happen. I think of, you know, I used to always say, if you can just get somebody to the Vineyard Worship Leader Retreat, just a, the newbie on your team or somebody that really doesn't know what's going, you know, they're like, what is this greater movement family thing? If you can just get them to the retreat, this will summarize and involve them at a level that is incredible, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times events are about selling the author's book or the movement's <laughs> right. thing. There's always a huge bookstore on the way out, right? And we've got merchandise and we love to celebrate who we are, but really what the product is. <laughs> always re always rep the brand, y'all. <laughs> Get your mug today. Um, yes, we will not. These are ours. We're not going to resell these. But what we're gathering people, like the, the gathering is the product like mm -hmm. looking to your right and left and seeing people that kind of you know might not look like you but they're doing the same thing and young and old you know this it, this multi-generational thing that happens in our movement mm -hmm. is present in those events and we've we've missed that this year seeing it. we've seen it on zoom but it's just such a beautiful thing that encapsulates so much of who we are yeah. when we say vineyard worship what is vineyard worship? Well, it's in those gatherings, you know, when we're there yeah. and we're worshiping together, you know. Well, when I look back on what I know of the vineyard movement, too, like this has always been a part of who we are, right? Like people from other places coming together and God moving, like that defines who we are. When I look back, that's everything I've ever experienced about vineyard. So that's what that's a part of our DNA and who we are. And, and we want to make that an offering here for Vineyard Worship, you know, come from wherever you are to a place to be together and experience the presence of God together, you know, like it's just I know are. even from my story and my experiences in the Vineyard and even in other places as well, but, but my Vineyard story is so connected to meeting God in particular gatherings. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's changed who I am. Yeah. It's, it's given definition to my vocation. And I know for me, I do not, I don't want to like, I don't want to be a part of a movement that, that isn't transferring that to the next generation, right? You know, I don't want to have experiences. I don't, I, it would be terrible if I had stories that the kids coming behind us don't have. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is, man, we've got to make room. Something that we discussed before this podcast was the, it's in these gatherings that we find, uh, we build relationships, we find our friends. So there is the there is the gathering itself and the dynamic presence of God stuff that happens yeah. when, when we gather. But then there's this network of friends and comrades and pe you know, people that can help carry us. I mean, so, so much of my journey as a worship leader... I'm carried by people that are my friends who aren't in my local context. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, that's one of the gifts of a movement like the Vineyard and, you know, and riding out of these retreats and these, you know, it happens in training events and other things as well. But, but the gatherings, uh, retreats in particular being a, you know, kind of a lightning rod moment where you build those relationships and that's, that keeps you alive mm -hmm. at the, at the, at the end of the it day. Does. Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've talked about this a lot just with other people who are maybe like new to the Vineyard or, or new to, 
just even to vineyard worship and some of the things we do. Like if you're going to stay in this for a long time, you've got to find your tribe inside the tribe, you know? And so you might be a vineyard worship leader who's listening right now, or you might even be just a vineyard pastor. You may have like your official area community. So like the vineyard has regions and it has areas or whatever. And that's important. And then you also have the community that w- within your church. But then the thing that I've noticed that our healthiest leaders all have is our healthiest thriving leaders, which ends up leading our healthiest, most thriving churches. They've all found their tribe that's inside the tribe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might be people in their local church. It might be people in their area or region, or it might not. Some of my best friends in the vineyard are not in my area, but they're people that I met at a vineyard event, but they live in California. Or they may be somebody who, you know, some of my best friends are in Maine and in Montana. And it's that tribe inside the tribe. And that's what I think that's what you were saying. It right. keeps us alive. That's right. And I'm just I'm mindful just as we're as we're sitting here talking on the ferment, knowing that a lot of our listeners are not vineyard folks. And I know we're, we're kind of speaking uh family conversation here, but I just want to, I know I speak for all of us to say, you're all welcome at yes. our events. These aren't, these aren't uh, denominational exclusive, even, you know, we're, we're not, uh, we're not talking uh, about our closed little group. Mm-hmm. We're, uh, if, if you are out there and you feel alone and you, you, you don't have, maybe you don't even have a tribe, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you're more than welcome to, to jump into this world. You wouldn't even us. be a weirdo. No. You wouldn't no. Even be weird. We're pretty we're like, pretty weird by ourselves, so you know well, we wouldn't be the weirdest. Yeah. Well, here's the here's the thing too. I was talking to Caleb Maskell, and if you don't know who Caleb Maskell is, Caleb sort of like leads the Society of Vineyard Scholars, smart guy. Um previous guest. Previous guest. Caleb has the Wimber papers in his possession. So he's been reading for the past year all the correspondence like to and from Wimber, all the things that John Wimber wrote. He's our founder. And one of the things that sort of like popped up to the surface again was this distinction inside of the vineyard, especially when Wimber was around, which is friends of the vineyard, you know, but right. to Casey's point, right. like you don't have to be a, you don't have to be a, an official part of a vineyard church to enjoy community or to find your tribe inside the tribe. The vineyard has always been open armed with the whole church. We want to lo- love and serve the whole church. And, and this, this idea of like friends of the vineyard, I think is it's not just historically important. It's like really important now, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Come hang out with us. Exactly. OK, good. OK, so the so we have training, we have documenting, we have gathering. And then the fourth thing that we feel called to do in venue worship is just simply inspire, inspire and, and not just human inspiration, but make moments or make space where God could inspire someone or the Bible talks about encouraging one another. Uh, I think of even some of the words of Paul about uh, the gifts of prophecy, like edification, exhortation, and comfort, like uh, strength for the journey. And part of what we want to do is we want to make things or make moments or create spaces where vineyard worship leaders and people who are doing this thing could uh, could receive strength for their vocation and their journey. And and this Ferment podcast is a part of that. You know, so it's, it's a weekly way to go, oh, what is a word maybe for me today? Or what is, could I listen to someone's story and then find my own story in it? So that's something that I feel particularly called to. But I hope that you noticed that as we were talking about the things that vineyard worship is called to, I hope you noticed that there's a lot of overlap, right? Like Mike is training, but a lot of your trainings are events. And Melissa has gatherings, but you're going to get inspiration from the gathering and training and training. Mm-hmm. And then when that begins to happen, right, mm-hmm. songs happen, right? Like songs, songs are the fruit at the end, right? Yeah. Of, right. Yeah. So I hope you notice that there's just a lot of, a lot of overlap. Yeah, It's similar to like our local church context. When you're around the staff table, you've got the kids worker, you've got the youth worker, the preachers, you know, in its best way, it's not siloed, right? We're all trying to fit, we're all rooting for each other. And we've been friends for a really long time and that becomes, it comes easier over time. Trust is built and there's like everything in my being wants the song world to thrive, right? So when I, when I, when I'm training, that's a huge part of it. I want to sing our family songs in our, in our training, you know, not all family songs, not all vineyard songs, but it's, it's a part of, 
uh, who we're becoming and what the story God's writing in our movement. It's, it's so valuable. Um, so finding ways to work together, I, I'm just super stoked that we've, I feel like we've landed really safely in that spot. I, I feel like it's been the, like that for years, but um, even more so it's growing to where it doesn't feel like we're ever competing against each other, but we're all just kind of working together. And with the movement at large, you know, with Multiply and the justice movement and diversity, you know, there's so many other places that uh, are trying to influence and help the movement. And to our best ability, we're saying yes, yes, and championing one another and trying never to work against each other and, and continue to push for each other's success, you know. Yeah, that's that's what happens when community's at its best. There's it's a dream. Well, I mean, I mean, Casey and I, we, I don't know, we've been talking about this a lot lately. When one thing works, everything works. Like right. you just, yeah. you get one thing to work. Something gets healthy. The whole thing gets healthier. Something grows. Everything grows. So if we can champion one another, it just gets better. So I, I just hope you notice there's just a lot of overlap and that's a, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are categories that help us name what we're called to, but they're not rigid categories. You use the word silo. I think that's really important. It's not like we're trying to silo any piece of this off. We want there to be interaction. So the ferment world and things like our training Tuesday, that this works within the inspiration. We're Completely. trying to just say, hey, think larger, think bigger. Mm -hmm. R&D, right? Research and development. What that's is right. the Lord doing? How do we grow it? And the definition actually helps us understand what it is that God's asking us to do with and for our vineyard family, you know, but sometimes naming it is not just good for us. Sometimes naming it is good for everybody who's listening. So they can go, Oh, these are the things that God is doing. So you're, you oversee us. You're the director, right? Of I work worship. with you guys. I'm the is director, but I, yeah, I'm the director. You know, it, you know, people could use the word overseer, but clearly this is a team and there are so many ways in which I know the least. <laughs> I just happen to be in this spot called director, but yeah, this is a, this is very much a team. I think one of the very cool things for me, at least in my time with Vineyard Worship and working has just been like the team part. Yeah. And this is your full-time job. This you is not my full-time job. That's funny. on the hills in Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's interesting you ask that because that's a good point. And Casey can maybe speak to this here in a second as well. This team and we have a we have an, another person who works with us, uh, helping us with social media and stuff. Uh, we're all part time except for Melissa. So Melissa's full time. Mike and Casey are like less than part time. You're like maybe quarter time. You know, I'm like part time. So we're all like kind of in the trenches. And you know, yeah, you're a pastor. You're preaching. I'm a pastor. I, I pastor. with grumpy elders and thankfully my elders are okay right now. Leaks on your, in the roof of your church, right? Leaks I mean, in the roof yeah. of the church. That's very present to me right now. Yeah. We had that huge rainstorm a couple of weeks ago and all the tiles turned brown. I'm like, are you oh. kidding me? Yeah. Here we go again. But yeah, that's a, that's an important piece to this. And, and maybe someone else would want to speak to this as well, but like we're, we're doing the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I think that, right. that that's the part I would want to say. Practitioners. Is, yeah, we're practitioners. We're not just working on the company. I'm using air quotes again here. We're not just working on the company side, but we're we're staying engaged in the actual uh, the field that many of us have been called to by the Lord. Yeah. Um, hey, why don't we do this? Because we've given like a like kind of an overview of what Vineyard Worship is or what we do. But I know that before we pressed record, Casey, you had mentioned. It might even be helpful to define what vineyard worship is not. Right. Yeah. And right. you kind of had a decent word there. So why, why don't you just share some of that? Because I think it's helpful. Well, I think one of the confusing things is, you know, when we say vineyard worship and we've been, I mean, this has been one example, like a lot of times we are talking about this company that that gathers people, that trains people, that that makes recordings, that, that creates uh, podcasts and inspires people. Uh, that's sort of one piece. But uh, really that phrase vineyard worship at its core you know, could describe what happens in every church. You know, what is vineyard worship? Well, it's really the the worship that emerges out of the local churches. We're just called to kind of look after pieces of that. So I think sometimes when we talk about vineyard worship, we need to remember that it's not an elite group. It's not us who, you know, draw some level of, of salary from this or, you know, some level of, of income from it. It's the community, and it's the community of worship leaders. It's It's, you know, 
like we described when we first opened, bass players and sound techs and and drummers and worship leaders and, and you know we even lump in uh, we don't we don't want to leave pastors out of the list. Pastors are a key piece of what is vineyard worship on the local level. So that's you know that's that's one thing I think we're all trying to make clear. Who's vineyard worship? Well, if you're in, in a vineyard church and you're part of a worship ministry, you are a vineyard worship. That's right. I think that's I think that's super important because it also gets to this idea too, like the local vineyard churches, they don't exist to serve this entity called right. vineyard worship, right? No, this this entity lives to serve those churches, right? And so, yeah, like what is vineyard worship? Well, it is the thing that's already happening, you know, and you're a part of it. Maybe you feel like you're a part of it, or maybe you don't. Maybe you know about it, or maybe you don't, but you are a part of it. And so hopefully, like part of this discussion is just making some on-ramps for people to be more connected to the thing they already are and to know what's happening. Well, I'm speaking from my seat, the document, the the recordings and songs and that sort of thing. There's pieces of what we've described here that are, are way more accessible to every vineyard person. Maybe mine's the least accessible. So I, I just want to say, even from a, you know, I hesitate to use the word top, but even from like the the recording side of things, music that you record and put out into the world. We certainly gather, and Adam used the word curate, curate hopefully the best of what emerges out of our creative community. But this is not meant to be the end, the uh, in total. We're not the clearing house. We're not the clearing house for yeah. all things vineyard, all, all vineyard recordings even. So if you feel like you're waiting to be picked or waiting to be selected by us or whoever, who, uh, whomever, don't wait. Uh, you, you have permission I think we do our best work when our creatives on the on the local level are free to make things and do things. So, so be released, make things. You know, you don't have to. You don't ask for. You're not. You, some people don't feel like they do need to ask for permission, but you don't need to ask our permission. You don't need to wait to be picked. Just make things. Make yeah, things. I think that, and that's been such a huge part of my story. I know it's, that's Mike's story. It's my story. It's mine it's, too. Yeah, I mean, so many people's stories. Like you just you just do your thing at your church and. You know, wow, it maybe touches some people eventually, at least in the song world, you know, like let it let it just happen. All right. I want to maybe switch this conversation here just another time. So we've kind of outlined who we are, what we do, hopefully the ways in which we want to serve our vineyard churches. But talk to me about getting connected. I mean, maybe you're a vineyard worship leader or you're listening to this. Maybe you've come in in the last six months or maybe you've been serving for 10 years, but you you kind of didn't know any other people outside of your church or you kind of didn't know any of the things that we were doing. You just you just weren't aware. And that's totally fine. Like, I understand that. It's, it's entirely possible. Maybe you kind of stumbled into the podcast and you go, you know what? Man, I need connection. I need deeper connection inside of the vineyard. I want that thing that you were talking about, Adam. I want, I want, I want the tribe inside the tribe. Talk somebody just talk to me. How do you how do you get more connected? How do you how do you tie in to the thing? Well, the podcast is a great place to start right now since we're not gathering in person. And then I would say we've got this vineyard structure, right? And it's kind of being reworked and revamped right now currently. But once those things are in place, you need to be in your local church, but then you need to reach out. You've got your area, your regional, right? And through those places, you'll you'll discover more people, more relationship. And then look, you know, we've got a website, social media, but we do things all the time. So just kind of like keeping your eyes open, your ears open to what's happening around you, but also what we're doing and, and uh, joining us when we do those things. Join us. Uh, just throwing, I might be committing us, committing us to something that uh, I didn't. Go I ahead, didn't, Casey. I didn't, be I didn't, bold. I didn't, I didn't, be bold. I didn't prepare you for this. Yeah. Obviously, we're in a position where we know a lot of vineyard worship leaders and a lot we, we know most of the worship leaders around the country, between the four of us in particular. So if you're in a local community and you want to connect with other like-minded vineyard folks, reach out to us. Uh, mm -hmm. Hit that's us on a, social. Yeah, that's not an overcommitment. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, sure. No. Mike, anything you want to say about that, about getting, like actually getting connected? Yeah. I mean, for the, the savages that are still on social media every day and you're you consuming it like I do, right? There's our forum, you know, there's the Vineyard Worship Leader. If you search Vineyard Worship Leader in Facebook, you'll see our group. That's just a great place to make a quick connection. You know, a lot of times people just say, hey, I've been distant for a while. This is who I am. This is where I'm at. Here's some of my challenges. And there's a lot of quick high fives 
that happen on that site, just check-ins. You know, people will share their heart, you know, if they lost somebody dear to them or they're frustrated with somebody on their team. It's a quick place to get some compassion and understanding. Not too much trolling happening, usually. You, we try to control I try it, but, to hide, Lord, um, Lord but it's really, Jesus. It really is a safe place. <laughs> yeah. um, another place is Vineyard Sound and Media Text. You know, several years ago, we did our first sound lab, and the guys at the end of it, and ladies, men and women, at the end of the conference, you said, mean hey, you mean there are women? Sound there's text? lots of females. I love. We this. were maybe so, 50 50 with our sound lab. How cool is that? It was beautiful. Huh. Um, so we created th- that little Facebook group. And here's the thing: like, yes, you there are a million groups you could post a question on, right? On, But it's different when it's within the family of who we are. It's just a little faster. It's more reliable. It's a little more boutique information. Like we have men and women that can literally answer any technical question you would ever have. They they can't get stumped. You know, Douglas Laws from the Keys, Bobby Spangler, these are dudes that will answer your question within minutes if you post it there. So those are just quick touch points, right? Obviously, any and all of the training events that we do throughout the year, especially if they're digital, send somebody, send anybody that just makes that connection. We'll do some pastoral connection, but they're going to get names and emails and Instagram hashtags and be able to start to reach out to one another. So don't be afraid to do that. That's a brilliant way of connecting and celebrating. Don't just consume, right? So don't just consume and wait for somebody to connect to you, but reach out to somebody else. As disconnected as you might be, or as your church might be super small, there might be a smaller church that's even more disconnected. Everybody can keep reaching out to one another. Mike bringing up social media reminds me that we started to do a weekly clubhouse. So clubhouse, yes. what? What is clubhouse? Yeah, Casey, well, tell everybody about our clubhouse. Well, clubhouse is an audio only social media platform. We do Thursdays eleven thirty. Is that kind of where we've landed? Eleven I mean, thirty PST. Okay, two thirty. Yeah. Oh, that's right. EST. Yeah. I'm Southern Cal, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm focused on the Pacific time zone. And that is kind of a week by week. Top, that's as topical. insidery as it gets. Yeah, that's like kinda, you want to know what's happening. That's right. Every week, uh, you can. Raise your hand, ask a question. Uh, again, we, we announced that throughout our social media uh, world. So, uh, yeah. And if you need a clubhouse invite, I'm sure you can get one by now. They're, they're going everywhere. Yeah, that's right. so. You know what else? We haven't launched it yet, but we've worked on a Discord. We just All haven't right. launched it Look yet. at that. Oh, man. We are so. killing it. There you go. And there's a couple TikToks. I mean, That's I think true. we, 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 we got by we a couple of TikToks. We mean, we mean Mike and James <laughs> Moscardini. That's what we mean. Yeah, Mike's launched his new dance career on, t- on, tic- on TikTok. <laughs> but we've got a video or two we on do. our official mm-hmm. TikTok. We do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. well, I, I think the thing that I just want to underline is there are online events, there are social media weekly gatherings like mm-hmm. Clubhouse, but then there are in person events that will be coming back online at some point this year. And if you're on the clubhouse, you will definitely know about it probably first. You'll hear like even the first rumblings and join in like wherever you're at. Just join in. It's it's a great thing. We want to hear from you. Even if you've never done anything with us, man, come to our clubhouse and raise your hand. We'll like we'll put you on the stage and let you ask a question. Like, I want to know what you're doing and what you're thinking. And the other thing I want to say is, especially when it comes to in-person events, bring your bass players Bring your background singers. Bring the 14-year-old boys who are new to your worship ministry, like the the middle school guys and stuff. Like this changes people's lives and it changes the culture of worship teams. I know a lot of times like budgets are constrained and sometimes there's only money for the worship leader to go. But here's what I've learned, especially when it comes to high school kids. If you will tell their parents that you want to take them to a church thing, the parents will pay for it. Even if the church can't pay for it, the parents will pay for it because they want their kids to go to a church thing and they'll get to meet Casey. They'll get to meet they'll get to meet like the legends of the vineyard. They'll get to meet people who have been doing this for years who will pray for them and care for them and eat meals with them. And I just want to say, like, really look around and bring that ancillary person who plays bass twice a month or sings PGs. I have a story. So we we've been doing little regional Zoom gatherings just and to kind of catch more. up. There's going to be gonna more. Be more. Yep. And this last one we had this young kid show up and I remembered he was at Cannon Beach worship leader retreat. His mom brought him. 
young kid. This kid joins us on Zoom, and then he starts prophetically speaking over people, like in the Zoom call, and and like has all these prophetic words. And but he came, like his mom brought him. He came, and then he showed up again, and then he's speaking to our elder worship leaders and has all these prophetic words. I mean, caught not taught, right? So Beautiful. bring them, bring yeah. the young people. Yeah, I, I just want to say again, like connection is the reason that all of this yeah. is important. You know, like no one is becoming a part of church because they want to be less connected. You know, no one is like everything in life is connection. In fact, like that's one way to understand life. Life is connection. Like my arm is alive because it's connected to my body. You know, plants are alive because they're connected to the ground. And when, when it comes to worship, leaders or people in pastoral ministry, connections, everything. And this is where we model it as worship leaders. We oftentimes look out at the congregation, and, and now as people are beginning to gather again, we, we often say, where is everybody? Where are the people? It's song one, you know. Why, why is it only the band up here? And worship truly, for it to be acceptable and to be biblical, needs to form in the image of God, and the image of God is three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, and that parakinesis is loving that's one another. Word. That's a big word, giving, Mike. Woo. Is that the right word? I think that's the the Dan Will Caleb Maskell word. That it, it's I love it. It's lifting one another up, right? That's right. The Father to the Son, and the Son to the Spirit, and the Spirit to the Son, and the Son. You know, it's this beautiful dance that's happening. And if we exclude ourselves from the dance, it is easier, right? It is less consequent. You know, there, there's a greater consequence, I believe, at the end of it. But there's a, it's safer. You know, if you're introverted, if you if it's just easier for you to be in the background, it's harder to get in to that dance. But we want our local churches to be dancing. We want people to be reconciled with one another. And the song that we lead them into is that much stronger, right? Unto God versus everybody just being at home, watching the best worship and sermons at home, and then just worshiping individually on the golf course and the mountains and the beach. But no, we come together and it's a sacrifice, right? We come together and we give of ourselves for one another, but we also receive so much. So as we begin to gather again, whether it be training or anything within the in the movement of churches, these are moments that are gifts to you. We know that in October, the pastors will be gathering in Phoenix, you know, I mean, bar some other, but we know that's happening and there'll yeah. be some worship invitations where you'll be able to hang out and we'll, we'll do something there. And then in the summer, we can't say too much yet because we haven't solidified, but there's probably going to be a moment in the summer where you're going to see, have an opportunity to see some folks face to face. Maybe save up a hundred bucks for a little plane ticket. There might be a moment that we have. Amen. Amen. Come on, Mike, prophesy. I'm feeling good about it, though. That's all I'm saying. Man, that's a good overview. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything that needs to be added to this, this little discussion? I think we did it. Mm -hmm. I think we did it. Melissa, you want to, I know this is, I didn't, I didn't talk to you about this. It's okay. You, you want to just pray for our Vineyard Worship community? Yeah. Like, you know. You don't have to look into the camera or anything, but you got the microphone. <laughs> Why don't you just pray for the Vineyard Worship and Bobby folks. and Jimmy? I see you over there. All right. Yeah. Well, God, I just um, I thank you for our community, God. I thank you for those that we've had the honor and privilege of meeting in the past, and I thank you for the honor and privilege of those that we will meet going forward, God. I pray that those that would hear this would hear it, Lord God. Um, they would receive a blessing that they have been called by you, God, um, that you see them, God, and that you go before them, Lord Jesus. God, and we bless them in that calling, Lord God. God, we are grateful for this family, um, and we ask for more, God. We ask that you would uh, multiply it, Lord God. Multiply it just as you do, God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, everybody. Peace. <laughs>
everyone. Casey Corum here, producer of the podcast. Thanks for listening. As always, if you've been enjoying the podcast, here's a few ways you can help us. First of all, leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. This helps more people find us. Also, connect with us on social media, Instagram at the Ferment Podcast and Twitter at Fermentcast. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace.